Hi, my name's John and this is John's English page. And today I'm gonna to give you some really common British idioms to help you speak more naturally. Let's do it. Express yourself, British English. Hi, and if you're new here, then welcome. I'm John and this is John's English page where I help intermediate level learners of English reach an advanced level. If that sounds like you, then please take a moment to subscribe to the channel and uh, without any further ado, let's get started. So the first expression is quite a strange one, to be honest, it's Bob's your uncle. Uh, and we say this if something is easy to do or if, it, um, if it's simple to complete. It's a bit like the French when they say, et voila. Um, so let me think of an example. To make the cake, you just mix the ingredients together, put it in the oven, set the timer, and Bob's your uncle. It's simple. Um, you might, another example might be, uh, to use this machine, just turn it on, press the button, and Bob's your uncle. So there you go, an expression to mean that something is simple or easy to do. The next expression is to be all mouth and trousers which is another strange one, typically British, and it means that somebody is full of uh, words and maybe able to speak boastfully about themselves, uh, but when it comes to actually doing something and putting their words into action, uh, they can't. So they're all mouth and trousers. For example, don't believe what he says about being the best uh, at work, he's all mouth and trousers. In other words, he's just all talk, uh, and no substance. This expression is barking up the wrong tree. So we usually say that you are barking up the wrong, wrong tree or somebody's barking up the wrong tree, meaning that either they're pursuing the wrong line of questioning or they're um, looking in the wrong place for answers. So um, I don't know why you're asking me uh, all these questions, you're barking up the wrong tree. Or uh, if you think she can help you, then you're completely wrong. You're barking up the wrong tree, I'm afraid. This one is chin up. Uh, this is your chin. So chin up uh, is uh, usually an imperative which we give to people to tell them to be happy, to, to cheer up a bit. Um, because clearly, you know, when you're happy, usually your head is a bit higher and maybe when you're sad, uh, it's down like this. So chin up is an invitation for someone to be a bit happier. Um, or maybe for them to not lose um, faith in something that they're doing, to encourage them. For example, um, like I know things are tough at work at the moment, but you know, chin up, I'm sure things will get better. Or, like, I'm really sorry you lost the game, but chin up, there's always next time. This expression is on the ball, and it means that somebody is alert or uh, observant um, or, or very ready to react to something. Uh, it's quite a positive expression. Um, so you could say, for example, um, she's during meetings at work, she's always on the ball. Uh, she always has an answer ready and she's uh, very good at reacting to people's questions. Or another example, uh, you really need to be on the ball if you're going to work in this fast paced industry. This expression, uh, to let the cat out of the bag, uh, is a metaphor to mean to tell a secret by mistake, usually. Uh, for example, um, we were organising a surprise party for my Auntie Bessie, uh, but unfortunately, uh, Uncle Pete let the cat out of the bag uh, by telling her beforehand. Or, um, we were planning on telling the staff about the merger of the two companies next week, but unfortunately, uh, the secretary let the cat out of the bag during the staff meeting. This expression, to be all ears, means that you're listening. Uh, you may have this in your language as well. I know in some languages they have a very similar, if not the same, expression. So if you're all ears, it means you're listening. Uh, we also use it as a kind of invitation for someone to tell you what they have to say. Uh, for example, uh, tell me about your holiday. I'm all ears. Or someone might say, look, I've got some bad news for you, I'm afraid. And I'll say, I'm all ears. In other words, go ahead. 
tell me your bad news. The next expression is to be tickled pink, which means to be absolutely delighted about something. Uh, for example, um, when I found out I'd been promoted, I was tickled pink. In other words, I was really, really happy. Or um, she'll be tickled pink when she finds out that her artwork has won the competition. And the final expression today is, it's not rocket science. Uh, this expression means that something's not difficult. Mm, in fact, it's probably even easy. Uh, when we say it's not rocket science, it's a typical example of British understatement. For example, you might say, um, you know, all you've got to do is boil an egg. It's not rocket science. Or to start the car, just put the key in the lock and turn it. It's not rocket science. So there you go, some idiomatic expressions in British English to help you speak more naturally. Now, it's your turn. In the comments below, tell me which is your favorite. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you wanna practice your English for free, then go to my website, www.johnsenglishclub.com and you can subscribe to my free dictation course, A Cup of Tea with John. The course includes eight hours of video, plus quizzes and downloadable PDFs, and it won't cost you anything. So, if you're upper intermediate to advanced level and you wanna practice your English, then go and check it out. There's a link below this video. And if you want even more, then I can also provide you with individual lessons with a qualified native British teacher or you can join my conversation club to practice your speaking. Well, that's all from me. I'll see you all very soon with my next video.